Hi there, and welcome to the Kingdom Sexuality Podcast. We're Paris and Alana, friends who have a heart for intimacy and long to uncover God's truth and design for sexual freedom within marriage. Welcome here. Welcome back, Kingdom Sexuality family. Today we have a really, really precious person to introduce to you. Some of you probably know this woman, and her name is Joy Skarka from Authentic Intimacy, and we are really, really honored to be hosting her today um, as we're going through our pornography series. So Joy has a bunch of wisdom and just a lot of vulnerability she's bringing to the table today with us, and we couldn't be more honored. So with that, Joy, say hello, and we would love to know a bit about you. Yes. Thanks, Paris. Thanks for having me, Alana. And <laughs> it is just so fun to be with you all. It was fun. I was able to connect with Paris a little bit before this. We were talking about Canada and different things and yes. just small connections <laughs> we have. So that was yes. fun. But oh, my name, very fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I'm Joy and I am the director of discipleship with Authentic Intimacy. And we're passionate about reclaiming God's design for sexuality, mm-hmm. which aligns so much with what you all are doing here on this yes. podcast. And so yeah. part of my role is overseeing. We have online book studies, which are basically mm-hmm. small groups. We create resources like blogs. We also have a podcast, Java with Julie. And all of this kind of flows from my passion to be in ministry, which is all because of my story and what God has brought me through, um, which includes sexual assault and then Mm. pornography addiction and just really wanting Mm. to help women not feel alone in their struggle because that's how I felt. Um, And so that's kind of what brought me into this field. And I'm excited for our conversation today. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, Joy. I love that that is something that spurred a passion in you. Mm-hmm. I feel like it can so easily cause someone to run away from from God and Christ and and what he has in store for you, but I love that your story is is not that <laughs> that it's the opposite, right? Where you like it spurs you on to to encourage others mm-hmm. and so I love that. I'm so I'm so thankful that that's your story. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I I kind of see it as it gives it a purpose, not mm-hmm. that not that anyone wants to go through no. those painful things, but having a way to help other women just makes me feel like, okay, God's going to use my pain to help someone else in their pain. Yeah. That's right. And, yeah, and I beautiful. love as we go through this series, um, we've had um, one other person, Tim, that we are interviewing. And it was the same thing with him, you know, sharing his, he just went a little bit into his personal experiences too, you know, like things that, you know, he had to work through shame with the identity of just shame and all these things. And as you're sharing this now too, Joy, I'm like, you know, that verse keeps coming to mind what the enemy has intended for our ill intent and for our, you know, destruction and God is going to bring forth and use for good for you and others and for his glory. And I think having that message of, message of hope in this series as we're tackling something this big is amazing. And I just want to speak right now to that, that God is fully in the business of redemption. And I just want to encourage you guys yeah. with that. So with that said, Joy, we would love to hear what you have to say um, say to us today. Like you mentioned, obviously, you, you've come through a lot of hardships and struggles in your past that were very painful. Um, in terms of just, like you said, sexual assault and pornography. Could you share with us a little bit on that and then go into how this has become a passion and then ultimately talking to the isolation women feel in this and that pornography is not just a man's problem? Mm -hmm, Exactly. And so for me, I was actually in fifth grade when I first saw pornography. I can just remember I had a friend over, we were in my room, she opened my computer and she was like, oh, let me show you something. And I had no idea it was called that at the time, but I just remember looking and making sure my room was closed, my door, so my parents wouldn't come in. You just felt like, okay, something is just not wrong with this. Um, But I wouldn't struggle with it again, or kind of be looking back at it again until college after I went through that assault. Mm -hmm. Since my family, we just were very closed system. We didn't have conversations about sex. Um, 
so I was just really confused after mm. what I had walked through and began Googling my questions. Mm. And so for me, porn was my sex education right, and it was right. a bad education at that because yeah. we all know that it's fake, it's edited, mm. it's abusive. Um, it portrays women in, in negative light mm. and yeah. um, it's a bad teacher. And so that's what I thought. And so, but because I was healing from this trauma, it also became my comforter. And anytime I felt sad or depressed or angry, all any, really any emotion, I was turning to it partnered with habitual masturbation just to Mm -hmm. find some sort of pleasure and escape from the pain that I was experiencing. Mm. So that was college, um, my first year of college. And it wasn't until I went to a a women's event with crew. It's a college ministry on my campus. Mm -hmm. And a woman went first and she shared her story of how Mm -hmm. she had struggled with pornography and masturbation. And then I got to go second. And I like to say that it was a gift to go second because I was able to say, you know, me too. I struggle too. And I realized I wasn't alone. Other women struggle too. And I think kind of Paris, what you were saying about this, when we label it as a men's issue, Mm -hmm. I had never heard a woman talk about it, let alone a Christian woman. Right. And so in this yes. moment, when I hear a Christian woman say yes. the word pornography, I mean, I just felt so much freedom in being yeah. able to share my story. So that really jump started my journey and really made me want to be that voice so that other women could go second. I love that. It's the whole yeah. relatability factor. I, and I, we've found a lot and I both, you know, as we've continued on in, in this very new ministry of ours, That is the first thing that, you know, the enemy will just jump in on um, when we start to have questions and we don't know where to look. And then we just feel like we are the only ones. We're the only ones struggling with this. And we believe that lie. And that often spurs us on to looking in the wrong places or just believing lies upon lives, you know, lies upon ourselves, and, you know, identifying with, with shame and things that are not called upon us from the Lord. And that is something that Tim has also brought to light. He's like secrecy or feeling alone and just not getting things on the table with someone who you know is trustworthy and and has your best interest and God's in mind. You know, it it ultimately hurts you more. And it's important for us as fellow believers and sisters in Christ to be that person to people. It's so important Mm -hmm. to be, you know, someone that is not on the judgment factor. You know, we're all coming in as as we're all the same you know we're all human we all struggle with stuff and for us to try and put varying degrees of how bad one sin is to another is ridiculous honestly Mm -hmm. right and so getting to that the place you know for each of us to be humble and loving to be a a safe place to talk to or Mm -hmm. to share with is is huge like it's huge yeah and I really like joy how you said like you wanted to go first, right? So now other women can be second. And like, I feel like that's Mm -hmm. a really great way to put it. And cause like, even now I, like I could, I could find, like, I would see how it'd be really difficult for a woman who was struggling with this to want to be the first to share about it. Right. Like to just come out of the gates with a friend and be like, yeah, this is something I struggle with. Mm -hmm. Like it's a really, really hard thing to do. Oh yeah. To have these resources to, to be that door, to be like, hey, you're not alone. Mm. I'll share my story and then you can share your story with someone Mm. else. Like, I think that's a beautiful way of putting it. Yeah, opening the door, right? And and the problem, right, the problem is that many doors aren't opened or women don't feel safe or they have shared and they were met with reactions of, oh, you struggle with that? You look at porn? I didn't know women do that. Some sort of response that really just makes them feel even more shameful. Uh And in the, so I lead a lot of our online groups and we have groups for women struggling with pornography at AI. And in these groups, every time women say, this is the first time they've ever talked Mm -hmm. about this because they've never had a space that was safe to share it. And some women, they can barely even get the words out. I had one woman say, I struggle with pornography. And then she turned off her camera and her mic and she in the chat box, because our groups are online in the chat box. She said, I just can't stop crying. I've never said these words before. And there's just so much shame around this issue of women and pornography. 
Yeah. But like you said before, Paris, how isolating, right? Like to, you'd feel so small and so alone and it's, it's bizarre. Like it's, we were watching a show the other day and they were just so flippant about pornography in the show. They were like sharing, Oh my God, this is what I watched. And we're like, Whoa, like this is bizarre. Like Mm. it's so commonplace at the same time. Like it's also, Mm. it's isolating, but it's also the media is just being like, Oh, this is okay. This is totally normal. Like you're, you're fine. Like even messages we've gotten, it's like, well, why is, why is this a problem? Why are we talking about this? Um, so it's interesting how there's like such varying degrees of, mm. of this. Yes, it's isolating for these women who maybe want freedom from it. But then there's also this pull to be like, well, but everything else is telling me that this is okay. And that, you know, the world says this is maybe normal or go me, right? Like, you know, yeah. putting myself first, my body's needs, you know, it's, it's so bizarre. Like it's such a different contrast. I hadn't really thought about it before. Yeah. I love that um, Tim talked about this in our previous episodes too, you know, just talking about – and actually, um, Authentic Intimacy, you guys just put on that amazing summit and also talking about this is, is a worldview and world culture versus gospel culture, you know, and just what is ultimately the difference between the two and, and, the, and obviously the faults, you know, of just the world, you know, if we're going to completely – continue to measure up to what culture tells us it is full of faults because we know that there is no holiness there's no there's nothing sacred about us as humanity and the sin in this world and we know that we have an enemy and he is the king of this world right and so yeah when when culture is preaching things to us we better be going back to God's word and aligning with him and, and, and checking all the facts because that's when things get very gray and muddled and people get so confused. And that's really our hearts in bringing these messages to our kingdom sexuality mm-hmm. family because we want to help bring that direction back to you and, and light and clarity to you and, and prayerfully tons of freedom. Mm-hmm. So Joy, for women who are struggling with this and like Mm -hmm. in your groups that you do, like what would be a first step of like when you're talking with these women, like how do you go about helping them find freedom from this? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. And kind of a lot of what Paris, I love, you bring it back to the gospel. Like it really is about understanding God's design for sexuality and how we are fully spiritual beings and we are fully sexual beings. And until women know that there's so much shame about even having a sexual desire and how to be single and sexual at the same time. So many women talk about, oh, we're sexual just when we get married, we're supposed to turn on this light Mm -hmm. switch and become sexual. (laughs) When really God God created us as sexual beings and, and this isn't a bad thing. So I think we have to take women back to scripture to kind of break the shame because I believe shame is what keeps people stuck in sexual addiction. Uh, If you're familiar with the sexual addiction cycle, it's you, you turn to porn, you experience shame, you turn back to porn, you experience more shame, the shame leads you to porn, all these different things. Um, Mm -hmm. But just thinking that you're never really going to break free. So in our groups, we talk about that. We talk about God's love and his character, Mm -hmm. meaning so many women ask, well, how could God even love me? Like still love me now when I'm so sexually broken Mm -hmm. or I'm struggling with this sin, or they've promised to God over and over again that this is going to be the last time. I look at porn Mm -hmm. and then it happens again the next day. And so they think they're beyond God's love and forgiveness. And so a lot of the times it's going back to scripture and, and relearning what, that, what is theology? Mm. What is the scripture saying about God's love and forgiveness, how he will forgive us seven times 70 over and over again. Um, And then I help them with a lot of practical tools, how to practically, retrain your mind how to run Mm -hmm. from pornography um so it's a lot of theology and truth and being known and loved in community that's really important and then we partner that with the practical tools of of the brain and how to run from temptation and whatnot um but a lot of it is foundational of 
what is the biblical narrative mm. of sexuality and that all mm. comes from julie slattery and mm. her book rethinking sexuality yes. is a great place to start with that knowledge um, and it's too it's getting to this point of surrender so for me in my story um, i met with a woman at a coffee shop each week and she basically discipled me as mm. i had to relearn what scripture said about sexuality. Cause like wow. we were talking about, I was discipled by the culture. Yeah. I thought, you know, that's, I, that's how I learned about sex. And yeah. so she had to retrain my thought mm-hmm. and I had to get to this point where I was willing to do whatever it takes mm-hmm. to find freedom from it. Mm-hmm. And for me, just mm-hmm. a quick story. I was living with six other girls in a college kind of like apartment and I took the doorknob off my door and my roommates were like, what are you doing? Like, is our landlord going to get upset? Like, what are you doing? And I was able to share with them, like, no, I actually struggle with pornography. I can't have the freedom. I can't be alone. And through my vulnerability, yes. the women actually, some of them shared that they were struggling too. And we were able to have this like group of community and accountability together. Amazing. So for me, it, it, I know like how cool is God that he just brought that group no together. Kidding. And it just took me taking that one step. of of opening that conversation so yeah but a bold step like that's Mm -hmm. a hard thing to do to admit to like people you love and you know that you're struggling but wow that's amazing yeah joy there's something i'm kind of hearing as an undertone as we're talking about this um that i want to bring up too and as you're sharing about this and your story i feel like one of the first things that the enemy does is to try and place upon women um, that they're not worthy and that keeps a lot of us in that place, you know, and, and, and then identifying with shame and that this is just our lot in life. Can we talk about that, about like worth? And because you're talking about the theology of our sexual narrative and, you know, God's heart towards us, I think is one of the first things you're probably saying that we need to get really familiar with because that's ultimately going to, then we're going to know whose we are, you know, that this is this we're worthy to to Christ. Mm-hmm. I love that, and I think the church is kind of wrestling with the phrase uh, "you are enough." Mm-hmm. Now it's kind of become this popular thing that people just sort of say, and I know I have said it before, and I'm now like kind of rethinking through this. Mm-hmm. I'm not really enough. I'm only enough through Christ. Like Christ yeah. is the only mm-hmm. reason I'm enough, and through Him and through knowing Him in a relationship with Him then I can begin to understand what freedom looks like. Um, I love the verse. I love Galatians and the passage is through, through Christ. That right Christ. <laughs> yes, oh, I love it. Well, I love Galatians 5.1. It's probably my favorite verse. And it talks about like through Christ, he's who sets us free. It's, it's not about doing more. Like a lot yes. of times around sexual addiction, people talk about, oh, well, if you pray enough, if you do enough, if you go to enough support groups, if you read enough books, mm-hmm. then you'll find freedom. But ultimately, mm-hmm. the only way we can find freedom is when we know our identity in Christ. Um, and when we begin to fall more deeply in love with him then through that our hearts change it's it's kind of yes. people try and change behavior first uh, like they think if we change our behavior our heart will change but i think it's the opposite that if we change our hearts then our behavior will begin to change as well and i don't know if that answers your question no, Paris. that but, is been um, on i love that <laughs> i think even that simple phrase you just ended with it's not the behavior than the heart it's the heart because then that which is you know overflowing out of your heart spills then into your life your actions your mind your behavior absolutely and that's that's all through scripture we know that that's where god works is right there in our souls and our hearts like that's where all of the things happen you know and i think that's huge huge for us to wrap our minds around and and really focus there you know meeting in that quiet spot with the lord every day and asking him to transform us you know that's amazing i love that mm-hmm. joy that was so good yeah and kind of just one more thing with that i heard someone say this in terms of an alcohol addiction but it was so true in my life too that mm-hmm. porn wasn't my problem it was my solution uh, meaning that my real problem was all the pain i was walking through from 
my abuse and my assault that I experienced. And yes, it became this habitual and there was addictive elements, but it was what I was turning to as a solution and it was a bad solution. Mm -hmm. And so for me to find freedom, I had to figure out how Jesus could become my new and better Mm -hmm. solution. solution. I love that. Jesus is our solution. Absolutely. That is beautiful. That's a great concept. I love that. What are like final steps? Like, how do you help these women? Yeah, like where can like we leave people? these places? Yeah. yeah, like how can we help them? Just like send them out, and like these are places you can go to find. Yeah, like an yes. authentic intimacy. Like this group. Like that sounds incredible. Mm-hmm. So things like that. Like what other resources could we point our followers to mm-hmm. if they're struggling yes. with this? Yes, great question. So a few different ministries that are doing amazing work. Pure Desire. It's probably my number one recommendation. They have groups for women and men um, walking through porn addiction and they're longer groups. I've led them before. They're actually Uh 10 months, 10 months long, which is a really long time to be with a group of people, but you grow really close. And actually the summit we just did was partnered with them. So highly recommend what they're doing, but some other like simpler, maybe more practical resources. If someone's like, I just want to start this journey now Mm -hmm. is um, one thing that I like to talk about is HALT. It's actually an acronym for knowing your triggers. Maybe you've heard of it. Some people talk about it a lot in in counseling. And so HALT stands for, these are when you're most likely to be like triggered, even if you're struggling with anything. Um, And it stands for hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. And I actually like to add an S on the end. So halts and add on stress because stress Ooh, is just such a big one that people turn to. So those are like the most common times people turn to pornography mm. or even to anything yeah, just in those sure. moments. Um, so when you know that, you can just stop for a moment and think, yeah. okay, what am I actually feeling right now? Do I need to eat a snack? Do I need to take a nap? Maybe I need to, if I'm lonely, like call a friend and process Mm -hmm. through my, my thoughts. Another Mm -hmm. thing I encourage my women to do, I call it creating a toolbox. And what that simply means is writing out a list of things you can turn to when you're tempted. So maybe it's going on a run. Maybe it's the phone Uh, number of a friend you can call. Maybe it's a podcast that you can listen to or a a worship song that you can sing. Maybe it's some scripture passages that you can turn to. So for me, like I just have that in my phone notes, like on my cell phone in my notepad, just call it toolbox, list all these things out. Um, So these are some more practical ways that you can like have resources on hand. Um, yeah. and, and really a lot of it too, there, there could be some deeper issues. So I'd mm-hmm. always encourage people to go to counseling kind of process. You have to get to the root issue. Like what's going on in your heart? Yeah. Cause if we just focus on symptoms, behavior modification, those are just band-aids. They're not going to get mm-hmm. to the real painful problem that's going on underneath. Absolutely. I love Ooh. that. I really, really, I'm so thankful that you were open to share about like your struggle and things Mm. like that. It's so beautiful. I find when people just, just share their hearts and it like Mm -hmm. makes me like want to cry a little bit, but it's just, it's really beautiful. So thank Mm. you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on here. Yes. Thank you so much. And again, like, (sighs) yeah, it's (laughs) good. Let the tears go. We can cry together. (laughs) This it is though, like looking at, you know, the freedom that God's led you through joy and now like we just feel so humbled and honored at the same time to be able to yeah. share you know you're, you're you're sharing your story on our platform and we're just praying that this touches so many lives that needs to hear this and that God is just on the move and that we're in a freedom movement here uh, for God's glory Hey friends, thank you so much for hanging out with us as we dive deeper into meaningful, godly intimacy, tackle the hard questions, and embrace truth while we're at it. We're also on Instagram at Kingdom Sexuality. You'll find our Instagram handle below in the show notes, where you'll also see any other resource links we may have mentioned in today's episode. As always, our hearts are to cultivate deep community and freedom with you guys. And we cannot wait to continue this journey alongside you. We'll see you in the next episode.